Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Monday, February 21st, 2018, and this is episode 31. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yes, absolutely, maybe, just maybe a little bit of lulls. Okay, we always add at least a daily lulls to what we're doing. So yes, definitely a little lulls. If you're watching on YouTube, you miss the opening of the show, and you'll also miss the very end, which you can only hear if you watch live on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. The image of the profile matches the image on the show. And if you do decide to friend request me because of the show, uh, you know, PM me, let me know, or write on my wall, whichever. Let me know that that's, that's why you sent the friend request. If you do that, I'm more likely to accept your friend request. If you say fall into a category that maybe, maybe I'm a little bit more hesitant to accept a friend request for. If you're watching live on Facebook, <coughs> don't forget to stay tuned in because I will respond to the comments after the YouTube part of the show is over. So be sure you comment. I will see it and I should be able to figure out what you're referring to by the because YouTube because Facebook shows the time that the comment was entered, so I should be able to figure that out. Uh if if not right after the show, then I'll 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 write a comment after the show's over. And I also have something to say about iState's news content producing strategy, which again, you're only going to hear that version on the Facebook page. If you're watching on YouTube, well, join me on Facebook so next time you don't miss the full show. Today's show title is Nullify the Nullifiers. And you can get the show notes at his headline is headlines.com or check out the links to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video. Or you can just go to iState.tv slash H O one three. And also you can find us. You can find the audio podcast show version. You probably after our, after this show is over, if you're watching on Facebook, uh, that, that the, the podcast version, usually it shows up about two hours or so after I get it posted. So about two or three hours from now, you'll be able to get that. And, and right now we're on iTunes and Stitcher and the audio podcast version that only includes the 20 minutes, the timer part of the show. That's it. On today's episode of Headlines You May Have Missed, Idaho's nullification fail, don't shoot the shooters, crypto heaven in Wyoming, Congress eyes crypto, and more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourselves for your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. Idaho's nullification bill dies in the House. So, so a rather bold bill that would have strongly asserted the sovereignty of the state of Idaho was, was shot down this past Monday, February 19th, 2018. A moment of silence for the, for the missing, well, the, I, I'll say the missing cojones and whatever female counterparts I'm not going to say. Uh, of of the Iowa legislators. Moment of silence. And there you go. There was your moment of silence. I'm doing my part. The bill, House Bill 461, would have enabled the state of Idaho to nullify any U.S. law or Supreme Court ruling that the state of Idaho didn't agree with. And in the end, the cowering legislators sons their equipage, I'll say, <laughs> chose the example of the Civil War, where numerous southern states nullified the actions of the federal government only to be brought to, be brought to heel by use of force. 
So the argument of nullification as a path to liberty before uh, the Civil War was pretty widespread. After the Civil War, not so much. But as of late, there's been a bit of a nullification movement among the liberty activists, with uh, Tom Woods being perhaps one of the biggest proponents. And in Idaho, alas, that effort has failed. So the tactic of the explicit and implicit threat of force has convinced enough of these elected officials that Idaho should just shut up and keep with the federal program. Else they too could face a military invasion and occupation by the federal government. And and yes, in before my slavery's note. I had to add this note. It's still not going to be enough for some of you. I'm absolutely sure of that. This is not an endorsement or defense of slavery in any way, shape, or form. The South's defense of slavery is absolutely reprehensible, and I'm I'm not for coercive action uh, in general unless it's to counter uh, a, a, it's a defensive counter to coercive action. But if the Constitution were actually a thing the south had every quote right unquote within the constitution to nullify the federal government even for horrible reasons like defending slavery as i always like to say there is no rule of law there is only rule of power now to be sure the myth of rule of law is a it's an aspect of power but it isn't power in and of itself the idea of nullification ended as a viable counter to the overreach of the federal government after the invasion and occupation of the South. This strike down of this bill further emphasizes uh, that point. And this happened on February 19th, 2018, and it was by a vote of 40 to 29. The bill died 40 to 29. And, and one representative said, this idea that states are superior to the U.S. Constitution has been debunked. Not for 150 years, it's been debunked for 200 years. Voting for this does nothing expose, except expose our state to legal challenges. And then a last quote here from Stephen Hartkin of Twin Falls. That debate was resolved in a bloody civil war. That's right, rule of power. That cost over 600,000 American lives and over 3 million wounded. That's all you, that's really, that sums it up there. Thank you, Representative Stephen Hartkin. And uh, I just, I just would like to know that do you, do you keep your, your, your equipage that has been removed voluntarily, I'm assuming, do you keep that in a jar by your bed as a reminder of, of what you either were, maybe you never were, or, or what you could be? I don't know. Russians jamming drones by jamming signals. This is a feel-good story of the year. Following the drone assault on a Russian military base in Syria, the Russians are working on ways to combat this drone vulnerability by using signal jams. And this story is from the Moscow Times. The RBC business portal reported Tuesday that it, it had obtained a Russian general staff document ordering 2G and 3G signals jammed in Kaimin by March 30th. The document orders other Russian outposts in Syria, including in Tartus, to suppress phone signals by July 1st. Unmanned aerial vehicles such as quad copters can follow a specific signal via a phone number i'm sure you know in the counter and in the in the counter and counter counter world of uh, drone wars i'm sure that the drone war aggressors will soon have an answer to that move but it's fascinating to see these the drone war reality emerging Flashback. California criminalizes stopping school mass shooters with a gun. Now, to be sure, folks, this is not legislation that specifically does that, but you'll, 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 you'll see the point here. Hopefully, you'll see the point here. Uh, California is leading the nation. They're leading the nation. Hey, California, you are a true innovator. You're cutting edge. 
And what are you cutting edge in? Well, you're cutting edge in uh, uh, figuring out uh, gentle ways that build up to slowly erode the ability of individuals to, quote, legally, unquote, that is, without threat of coercion, acquire, possess, and carry effective tools of self-defense. Guns, and that's what they are. They're effective tools of self-defense. Uh, and to be sure, any tool of self-defense can also be a tool of aggression. That, that goes without saying. They hate guns so much in California that they passed a bill back in October of 2017 that would criminalize anyone from using a gun to stop a school shooting. And now, now the bill, what, what the bill would specifically do is criminalize the possession of a firearm on a school campus under all circumstances. And what that has done is, is it simply assured that anyone with a gun who might use it to stop a school shooting can be assured they will face criminal prosecution for the heroic deeds. Now, now this bill, it, it, it flew under the radar at the time and it didn't get much coverage by the media outside of a Breitbart article. It is, it is a real thing. It's, it's, it's not fake news. It's totally real. So, in light of recent events, along with the rising chorus of anti-human, anti-liberty, anti-gun voices, I thought I would remind my audience of the sheer insanity of the gun grabbers, exposing their hatred of guns and their indifference to the safety and welfare of, of, of the children. So the bill, which was signed into law by Jerry, I hate guns more than I love children, Brown, would criminalize the possession of firearms on school ca campuses under all circumstances. Like I said, thus assuring, assuring that psychopaths looking for target-rich safe killing zones, as in uh, it's safe to kill without fear of consequences for at least a good 10 minutes, if not longer, know exactly where to go in California, the schools. And so I'll say this. Do you, Jerry Brown, and the anti-human, anti-liberty tyrants that voted for this bill, do you, do you hate guns so much that you would so easily, so willingly put at risk the lives of our children? And judging by the passage of... Uh, AB 424, I would say the answer is yes. And and yes, going into the future, there may be times where I will pick pick a news item that I think kind of got lost and didn't get a lot of coverage that's still pretty relevant. So every once in a while, on headlines you may have missed, you're going to hear a headline that may be a few months old. That will That trend will continue. Ooh, I think I skipped. No. Yeah, I almost skipped. How did I jump so far ahead? Here we go. Wyoming bill would free crypto from taxation. With the federal government and many state governments uh, uh, working so diligently at present to try to figure out ways to regulate and control cryptocurrencies or fintech in general, Wyoming is actually working on trying to become crypto heaven. And Ten as we minutes. reported uh, in another story, blockchain heaven could soon be created in Wyoming. Now, while they're doing that, I do want to mention in passing that they're also working on legislation that would require individuals to have to pay a license to get uh, uh, porn blocking software removed from their computers, which would be mandatorily placed on them. So that kind of schizophrenic there, Wyoming. But... Let me go on. So a new bill introduced to the Wyoming Senate has just passed by a vote of 26 to 3. It's a bipartisan bill, too, by the way, that would assure assets from cryptocurrency would be exempt from property tax. The moves are intended to bring cryptopreneurs into Wyoming. And this is Wyoming Senate Bill 111. Let there be light to help your computers think fathom this your computer might use lights to teach itself to think that's what the folk at fathom are working on a computer that processes data using light 
not electricity. And this is from Wired.com. This computer uses light, not electricity, to train AI algorithms. So it's a prototype computer that processes data using light, not electricity, and it's learning to recognize handwritten digits. In other experiments, the device learned to generate sentences in text. Right now, this embryonic optical computer is good, not great. On its best run, it reads 90% of the scroll. Okay, I don't need to read all that. Uh, let, me, let, me get, let me get to the real key point here. Fathom's founders are betting this hunger for more powerful machine learning will outstrip the capabilities of purely electronic computers. Optics has fundamentally fundamental advantages over electronics that no amount of design will overcome, says William Andrag. He and his brother's 11-person company is backed by Playground Global, the venture firm led by Andy Rubin, who co-invented the Android operating system, now owned by Google. Boo! I always boo when I hear the word Google. I don't know why. Knee-jerk reaction. Fathom operates out of Playground's combined offices and operating system now owned by Google. Or, 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 or I backed up there. No, 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 it is. It's now owned by Go. No, it's not. Never mind. Whew. I thought I read that, that Google owned that too. Wow. No, no, they don't. So uh, they operate out of Playground's combined offices and workshops in Palo Alto, California. My eyes skipped up above and it combined uh, sentences in a way that they weren't supposed to be combined. So the facility, which true to its name also boasts a slide popular with Andreg's 18-month-old... I don't know why that matters. I'm not going to read the rest of this. Anyway, uh, so, so, so suffice to say, light is the thing and it's going to make computers smarter eventually. Right now, no, but, but it's on the way. Congress working on ways to regulate, control cryptocurrencies. Yeah. No, 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 I'm not going to cheer that on. Whether it's now or later, the federal government is absolutely eyeing ways to assure that the emerging fintech market is controlled and regulated. Under the guise of protecting people from themselves, the intention is mostly to assure the federal government gets their cut from voluntary transactions between two entities. Let's be clear. That's what we're talking about. But in addition to that, they also want to assure that the fintech market does not too successfully provide individuals with the tools to disentangle from the coercive enterprise systems that dominate finance today. So that means that, you know, within fintech, fintech world you can create your own fintech banks and not have to go through all that regulation garbaggio that you have to do now to try and start a bank with fintech you could eventually create systems and maybe some have already that allows individuals to exchange value anonymously these things are terrible 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 prospects for uh, financial institutions that, that, that rely on and depend on and help uh, also bolster up the coercive enterprise. So Congress is looking at ways to regulate fintech cryptocurrency in a manner that will allow for the coercive enterprise to enjoy the benefits of fintech without being vulnerable to the Five risks minutes. from a coercive enterprise perspective of fintech. So the the Congress uh, rep, 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 Republican Senator Mike Rounds sitting on the Senate Banking Committee said there's no question about the fact that there is a need for a regulatory framework. Cryptocurrency regulation today is something of a patchwork of regulatory oversight as it is a duty shared by the SEC, blah, 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 multiple, multiple blah, blahs. The result of the everyone is responsible for Bitcoin structure of current regulations means that in practice, no one is responsible for Bitcoin. There, let's just leave it at that. Just let that sentence out there and say that no one is responsible for Bitcoin End and stop. But no. No, they're, no, they're 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 going to con continue. And then, lastly, here, Republican Representative Bill Huzenga, who's the chairman of the House Financial Services Subcommittee on Capital Markets, 
You should be booing him right now. The SEC is properly the lead on the issue. Six months ago, we didn't see this explosion. The marketplace has, ch has changed. We have to look carefully at all of the cryptocurrencies and make sure individuals can get taken advantage of. Right, right. I outlined above the real reasons, but anyway. U.S. warships in Black Sea send message to Russia. This is not your moment of lulls, but in a way it could be. It's not, though. It's coming up right after this. The geographical reality of Russia is a fundamental threat to the U.S. presence in the Black Sea. And the U.S. means to show Russia that their naked aggression of placing their nation so close to U.S. warships in the Black Sea will not be tolerated. To this end, the U.S. is sending more warships to the Black Sea, sending a message to Russia. When your country's geographical reality interferes with the U.S. overseas military bases, you will face the wrath of watching U.S. ships sail on the waters that lie just off your shores. I could I could, I could hear Donald making that call to Putin, and, well, he would have said it differently, but <laughs> that's essentially, he didn't call Putin about this, but if he did, that, that, that would be what he'd be saying. What follows uh, is a normie, normie report of this escalation of the U.S. presence in the Black Sea, sons the actual reality of the situation, and it's basically a straight, straight news article. Yes, CNN has straight news articles now and then, but it's not really straight because it's not really given the straight facts. So the Arleigh Burr class guided missile destroyer USS Kearney joined the USS Ross in the Black Sea to, quote, conduct maritime security operations. And you can read more going to the show notes. And let's, 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 let's end here with our, our lulls of the day. Stink bugs prevent delivery of Japanese cars to New Zealand. Well, 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 this stinks in, in, in more ways than one. Apparently, three cargo ships filled with cars and machinery from Japan were barred entry into New Zealand ports. When it was discovered, the cargo ships were infested with, well, the title kind of ruins it. Maybe I shouldn't have read the title. I should have just went right to this because it ruined the punchline. Such as it is. Stink bugs. That's right. Stink bugs. So stink bugs have felled Japanese imports of cars to New Zealand. Well, in, in part. Uh, three cargo ships carrying imported cars and machinery were refused entry at New Zealand ports this month after they were found to have hordes of the bugs aboard, according to New Zealand One authorities. Minute. This story is from CNN money. Let's see if we can get to a couple of these other. I got two more headlines so if we can get to them real quick. Israel to tax crypto like it's property. So Israel is going to follow the example of the US that began taxing cryptocurrency back in 2014 like it's property. So everyone wants their pound of flesh even if it's digital and Israel is no different it seems. In our last headline 30 seconds Concrete like clothes, thanks to copper nanoparticles. The not so mad scientists at the University of Manchester, with help from Chinese universities, have developed a way to bind copper nanoparticles onto textiles, opening up the door to creating concrete like wearable clothing. Move over, Iron Man. It's time to meet concrete. Ten person. seconds. Thanks to copper. And the story, there's more you can read at news medical.net if you go to the show notes. But unfortunately, folks. And I think you know what that means when you hear that beep. You know what that means. That means that's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. If you would like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for February 21st, 2018, or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video, or go to iState.tv backslash H, well, just slash, not backslash, slash H031. And as I said earlier, you can also find our podcast shows on iTunes as well as Stitcher by searching for iState. 
And don't forget to join me tonight on this Daily Wednesday with the One True Niz at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. Tonight's show is not titled, as we haven't even picked the stories yet, but the link to the page, the Facebook page, is in the video description of this video. The video description of this video? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to say it that way. As always, remember... Those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow, and you know what I'm going to say from now on? I'm going to say until tomorrow, no later than 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, barring some sort of technical disaster. Uh, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.